One second, one second. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Give me one second. I got I got problems. <laughs> All right, good morning. Oh, this is not going to work either. All right, there we go. Welcome, everybody. I'll uh, explain what's going on in a hot minute here, but I'm dealing with some what I would consider material issues with the production studio, but that's okay. We're going to get through it. Welcome, everybody. Today is Monday, April 3rd, 2023. Happy April. Welcome to episode number 336 of the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. I'm your host, Dr. Gerald Dozier, and over the next 45 minutes, me, you, Carrie Legosek, Jenny Housley, Tom Bishop, Moose Tube, Greg Fowler, and so many more of the Simply Cyber community are going to be tearing up the top cyber news stories of the day. And I'll be giving my opinion, my expert analysis on each of those stories on what it means to you as a practitioner, or if you're looking to break in the industry, we're going to get hot value for you believe that i'd hit the spicy button but i can't soundboard is is greatly degraded at the moment but you know you know what we are we're cybersecurity professionals so we're gonna do we're gonna execute our business continuity plan i've queued up what i would consider the most important <laughs> the most important sound effects that i could there we go carl all right now before we get into the top cyber news i do want to Throw some love to the stream sponsors. Thank you very much, stream sponsors, for keeping it real. Starting with my good friend Eric Taylor over at Barricade Cyber Solutions. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated, hardworking business owners into turmoil. But Barricade Cyber Solutions knows how to mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. Believe that. Check them out at barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. You can see their website on stream right now. Just go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. That's where Eric Taylor's calendar is, and that's where the magic happens. You can get on his calendar today at 1 p.m. Really have a conversation about what would happen, uh, how they could help you out if you got hit with ransomware or worse. Right? Also want to say much love to Panopsi. Try to get up with Brandon on Friday. Panopsi is a full-service information security professional services company, but one of the services they offer that's dynamite is quantified risk assessment. A quantified risk assessment is a evidence-based, statistically sound risk assessment. So instead of a, a heat map, red, yellow, blue, or red, yellow, green, you get statistical things like you have a 22 to 28% chance of suffering a cyber you know, ransomware attack this year. Uh, and you can reduce that percentage by doing X, Y, and Z. Also, um, you know, it's not just about investing money. Like, you you know, you're not managing your third-party risk management. Your external attack surface is, you know, a hot mess on fire, mis misconfigured everything everywhere. You got QNAP devices up in here. Uh, you can reduce your risk by addressing those as well. And, and you know, basically the business likes statistics because you can measure them you can repeat the process and you could see you know trend data on how things are going so anyways Panopsi can help you out with that if you'd like to have a longer conversation about quantified risk assessments versus qualified risk assessments stay tuned for the jaw jacking segment at the end of the show i'll be happy to get into that also much love for xm cyber but more about them at the mid roll guys i want to remind you to be sure you say hi in chat because oh misty eyed 5 a.m. Thanks for getting up, Missy Eyed. Um, I want to remind you all that each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing is worth half a CPE, so be sure to say what's up in chat. Um, also, side note, Simply CyberCon, I did confirm that CPEs can be um, gathered for Simply CyberCon, and I'm putting mechanisms in place to make sure that you guys can get those CPEs. So we got you taken care of over here at Simply Cyber for all your CPE needs and more. <laughs> Come on down. All right, guys, if you're live in chat right now, I see 139 of you. Believe me, I feel it. I feel you. 139 team live. If you're on the West Coast, thanks for getting up early. Yeet, yeet, yeet. I, oh, my God. Barricade Cyber. I, 
okay, so Eric Taylor, Barricade Cyber, I don't have the sound effect for what? So I'm gonna have to do it myself. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. I I'm really having a nerfed um, soundboard here, guys. Uh, be sure to say, um, be sure to grab up those uh, gifted subs. Thank you so much, Eric Taylor, um, for the Simply Cyber Community squad support. Go ahead, grab those emotes. Look in your emote tray. You'll see a whole bunch of new ones, including some sick ones of John Strand. There he is. Uh, if you are um, on replay, hashtag team replay, say what's up in the comments. If you are a passive observer, this is something I've been doing for about a month now, and I love it. I'm going to keep leaning into it. If you have been quiet on the sidelines, you know, you don't want to say hi, you feel shy, introverted, um, imposter syndrome, whatever it is, take a second. Once this, uh, <laughs> once this squad storm calms down, um, say what's up, hashtag passive observer. If you see someone say hashtag passive observer, please welcome them to the chat. We have a good time here. All right, guys, stay tuned. Uh, it is Monday, so it's Callan's Art of the Week. He's, he's, he's stepped into a new format, which I'll share with you at the mid-roll. And I want to remind you, stay tuned to the end because we have a new emote. Barricade Cyber dropping another 50. Ah, face melting. All right, Jesus, guys. We might have two emotes coming coming in hot from Sim, uh, from uh, Barricade Cyber Solutions. Dang, son. All right. So stay tuned to the end because we're going to actually have... Uh, we're going to vote on a new emote, okay? I got a new emote. And I've got, I've got um, some updates on Simply CyberCon that we could use some community support and inputs on. But let's um, let's do the news first. Wow, dropping heat, dropping bombs, Eric Taylor. All right, let's do the news. See you guys at the mid roll. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Monday, April third, twenty twenty three. More evidence links 3CX supply chain attack to North Korean hacking group. The supply chain attack on the enterprise phone company 3CX used hacking code that exactly matches malware previously seen in attacks by a notorious North Korean group, according to new analysis. Sophos added more evidence on Friday to this attribution, saying that a shell code loader the attacker used has only previously been seen in incidents attributed to the Lazarus group. They continued, quote, it's clear the perpetrators were able to compromise the installation in a way that users unknowingly downloaded not only the original application, but also additional malicious code, end quote. The hackers secretly modified these apps, so they executed malicious commands in the background, downloading malware that allowed them to steal sensitive information from the web browsers on users' computers. Hackers right. exploiting WordPress. All right, hold on. So I have to, I have to start and stop the podcast manually too. I can't switch scenes um, smoothly. I'm telling you guys, this. You're right now. You're looking at a disaster recovery instance of the Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. Okay, so 3CX. Um, I wish there was a graphic here, guys. John Hammond did a, a video on this um, over the weekend. I told you guys on Friday when this dropped that this was a massive story. I told you that this is on on the level of solar winds. Okay, this is a massive, massive attack. Now, the one, you know, in in the most bizarre, perverse perception of this story, the one saving grace that we have is that Lazarus Group is almost exclusively financially focused almost exclusively financially focused so i'm not saying that this is good but all of these compromised businesses they said something like 600,000 businesses something something in the um in the range of 12 million deployed endpoints uh, phones in in the world and 600,000 businesses the one saving grace is that they're not looking to hopefully like ransomware all these businesses or whatever some businesses are going to get screwed basically uh, well, hold on. I'll tell you in a second. Um, if you are running 3CX, you absolutely already know about this story. You should be executing 3CX as a company. I have to imagine has notified their customer base. The trick is going to be if you bought phones like secondhand, which is not uncommon if you're a business, 
Um, you bought, you know, through a VAR or secondhand used phone systems. You had some, you know, local um, commercial installation system come in and put it in. You may not be getting the updates from 3CX um, on how to respond to this. You may not also have the capability in house to properly handle this, which is why you would want to call someone like Barricade Cyber. That's not even a plug for Barricade Cyber. I mean, it's just a fact. Like this is, this is where a business like that comes into play because. I'm telling you right now, guys, if you're running 3CX phones in your business and you're doing nothing about this, you might as well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what can I say at uh, 8 a.m. on a Monday morning that isn't, that is so suitable for work? You, you Like, it's it's not good. It's not good. I mean, the only thing I can think of is like, <laughs> touch your toes because you're you're definitely not going to like what's going on, okay? All right, the other thing I would say is, Here's what I think is going to happen, okay? So, so tin foil hat, Jerry, emote if you would. For those, for those 100 people, thank you. Yeah, BSEC, turn on RDP. For those, for those 100 new squad members who Eric Taylor just hooked up, please check out the uh, tin foil hats uh, emote in chat. Thank you, William Welch. Here's what I think is going to happen, okay? If I was pulling the levers of um, Lazarus Group, okay? Here's what happens. They infect, let's just say for the sake of argument, they get 10%, which is still pretty low. Um, and they get 60,000 businesses, okay? Infected, nice, nice, clean, infected, reporting in. Guys, it's going to take time. It's going to take time for them to survey their victim pool, right? Like, think, think about it this way. Like, imagine if you will for a second, you have like a pool and you fill it up with like pond water and then somehow you trick... Uh, like a bunch of fish to like, you know, a dump truck full of fish comes back and dumps it in the pond. Okay, you've got like a million different fish or you've got 60,000 different fish in there. That's fine. But you've got to understand like which fish are the meaty fish and which ones are the scaly ones or the bony ones, right? Like you have this victim pool, but you're not, they're not like Lazarus Group isn't going to just go YOLO and hit all of them at once and like be like, yeah, baby, make it rain. No, 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 no. What they're going to do is they're going to analyze who they got that's going to take maybe a month or two okay like who did we get what do we have in our victim pool then they're going to prioritize okay like this is a financial services company this is a healthcare company like whatever it is then i would imagine they're going to be dropping info stealers all over the place to you know to identify like whale wallets and stuff like that it's basically the recon phase is going to continue, in my opinion, for some time. Because when they infected the 3CX phones and the phones sent the update to all of the 3CX customer base, Lazarus Group didn't know who got pushed the update and who did not get pushed the update. So they need to understand, right? So it's gonna take a little while. So, so my whole point is this is like a SolarWinds level problem, but we're not gonna see it in the news next week on it, it popped. What's gonna happen is a couple major, major players are gonna get hosed in like May. And then a, a, a couple days later, the story's gonna come out that, oh, like, you know, like like Dish Network the other, a couple months ago, like Dish Network reporting a cyber breach. And then like a couple days later, like the story broke. Same thing's gonna happen here. Big company, big wallets, big fat uh, whales are gonna get hit and we're not gonna know why. And then a couple days later, it's gonna say linked to 3CX Lazarus Group. And it's gonna be wicked financially motivated because Lazarus Group, Straight cash, homie. All about that straight cash, homie. All right, so stay tuned for that. Again, for your own benefit, if you're running 3CX, you absolutely should be responding to this to this incident. Um, and, and keep in mind, and I'm sorry to spend so much time on this story, it's just important. Keep in mind, like replacing the phones, fine, but that you need to continue to threat hunt. If they have gotten into your network and using the 3CX phone as an entry point, they likely will want to move a little laterally and establish some persistence, especially because this is all out in the news. So they know that it's a, a closing window for them, all right? All right. Oh, God, I hate this manual stuff. Elementor Pro vulnerability leaving millions of sites at risk. Unknown threat actors are actively exploiting a recently patched security vulnerability in the Elementor Pro website builder plugin for WordPress. The flaw, described as a case of broken access control, impacts versions 3.11.6 and earlier. It was addressed by the plugin maintainers in version 3.11.7 released on March 22nd.
The premium plugin is estimated to be used on over 12 million sites. Successful exploitation of the high severity flaw allows an authenticated attacker to complete a takeover of a WordPress site that has WooCommerce enabled. All right. Dish. This isn't the first time we've heard about this. Um, the WooCommerce thing's been in the news for a while. Dude, guys, um, WordPress used to be, I mean, it still is, but it, I feel like it's less hit now. But WordPress used to be like, it used to be laughable, man. Like you would like every day there'd be a WordPress hack. You got to remember word. Okay. So for those of you who do not know, WordPress is basically like a website um, platform. Okay. It allows you to stand up and make really interesting, rich, engaging websites fairly easy, right? It, it eliminates the need for uh, custom development, right? You can do a little custom development, but it's very um it's can we get a woo it's very um uh, modular and, and people can make plugins and stuff and that's really where the problem lies the problem really isn't in wordpress itself it's in the host of plugins think think a really common or to me a really obvious kind of parallel here is like chrome browser is like wordpress and then all the plugins and extensions you put in your chrome browser are like the plugins in wordpress so if you add a bunch of plugins you're introducing attack surface and if you don't manage them and one of them has a security vulnerability it can punch a hole in the side of your you know computer your business your website whatever this particular one is it's it's a pretty straightforward if you're running El elementor pro on your wordpress site that you're responsible for and if you're running WordPress in your environment and you don't know what plugins you have, that's a bigger problem that you need to analyze and understand. Work with your IT people um, and basically just get this thing patched. It's being actively exploited, which means it's a priority. If you don't want your entire website taken over by a threat actor, make sure that you get this addressed. That's as simple as it is. One more thing to share with you. It's important to know that it's very easy to spin up a WordPress website, which means people can just spin them up without telling you. Okay. So like, don't think that like, oh, your main company website isn't WordPress. You're good to go. Be aware that you could have WordPress sites somewhere in your environment, right? Like your, um, geez, like, you know, like, um, I don't know the, the, the public relations people, right? Uh, open up a website uh, to accept donations because they're doing like a food drive or something like that. Or you work at a, a college or a university and the donor people, the people who kind of reach out to alumni for money, maybe they set up a website to take money in, right? Hey, don't, we don't want to bother IT. We'll just set this up ourselves. This happens all the time. So make sure that you're proactively looking at your environment for WordPress sites and, and uh, things of those like or else you could run into a risk, okay? Wrapped with multiple lawsuits after a ransomware cyber attack. Dish Network has been slapped with multiple class action lawsuits after it suffered a ransomware incident that was behind the company's multi-day network outage. These class action lawsuits filed across different states allege that Dish, quote, overstated, end quote, its operational efficiency while having a deficient cybersecurity and IT infrastructure. The legal actions aimed to recover losses faced by DISH investors who were adversely affected by what has been dubbed a, quote, securities fraud, end quote. Lockbit announces leak. Wow. See, this is the thing, guys, man. Cybersecurity ransomware incidents, they suck. So not only do you get hit, hammered, knocked down, you finally recover, and now you've got six class action lawsuits coming after you. Not good. Again, if you're a regular of the show, you know how I feel about class action lawsuits. They they disgust me. <laughs> straight cash, homie. They're all about that straight cash, homie, for the lawyers. You know, and whatever. Go ahead, lawyers. Get yours. But when I get a check in the mail for four cents, it's laughable. And I don't know if anyone else in, in, in chat has ever received the output of a class action lawsuit. But it's a joke. It's, it's usually like less than a dollar. And it's dumb. And, and of course, the lawyers get paid out like millions. So stupid. Okay. Um, the angle that they're coming at is that Dish's stock. Um, you know, as a publicly traded company, Dish was suffering an incident. And they, they're saying that they misstated what their um, operational efficiency was, which is, 
technically illegal because you are a publicly traded company. There is a lot of need for transparency, transparency and things of that like. Uh, I won't spend a terrible amount of time on this. Just remember, if you are a shareholder of Dish Network, you can expect to receive a tiny, tiny check at some point in the future. I will, I will say this. If I had to guess, which is what I do up here, right? A little tinfoil hat, Jerry. Okay, if I had to guess, this is what's going to happen, okay? Dish will get sued, class action lawsuit. They'll settle out of court because Dish doesn't want to have to pay for the lawyer fees, even though Dish probably has a strong case against this. Dish will settle out of court and, you know, the law firms will get theirs and that'll be the end of it. Guys, I don't feel like, I feel like it's un, unfair for Dish. Um, they got hit with a ransomware attack. It's a very fluid situation. It's very, very fluid. To be able to accurately report your operational efficiencies it's kind of unrealistic. And, and actually, this is why you should do tabletop exercises, guys. This is why tabletop exercises are so valuable. Because when you deal with an incident of this magnitude, the business is going to be all up in your wanting to know every 10 minutes, what's the update? What's the update? What's the update? I can't access this. And like, you can't do your job. You can't work. And then you've got to bring in other like, you know, third party incident response law firms. Everybody's got to get briefed up public relations. It's a hot mess, dude. It's a wicked hot mess. So this is why tabletop exercises are valuable and why you really should do it. So, uh, gosh, anyways, we'll see. I, I mean, to me, it's fine. I don't use dish. So, it, you know, I'm on the sidelines to this. But we'll see how it goes. Oh, final thing on on like uh, hot take central over here. This will take three to five years to get resolved. Class action lawsuits take forever. Data stolen from the South Korean National Tax Service. On March 29th, the Lockbit ransomware gang announced the hack of the South Korean National Tax Service. The group added the South Korean agency to its Tor leak site and announced the release of stolen data by April 1st, in case the ransom was not paid. The National Tax Service, which is mainly in charge of the assessment and collection of internal taxes, was established as an external organization of the Ministry of Finance on March 3rd, 1966. At the time of this recording, the group has yet to publish the stolen data. However, if the hack was real, this data poses a severe risk to the privacy and security of South Korean citizens. Ugh. All right. Hey, really quickly, uh, Kimberly, uh, best wishes on a speedy recovery for your puppy. I am, a, <laughs> as many of you know, I am a dog. We're a dog family up in here, so I, I feel for you. Um, okay, so Lockbit hits uh, Korea's tax, you know, national tax service, whatever. Um, here's the deal. Lockbit is a ransomware as a service model. So like Lockbit, it's not like Lockbit always hits like government entities. Like Lockbit is everywhere. Lockbit had like a little bit of a flare up in Canada about six months ago. Lockbit can be anywhere because all it needs is somebody, me or you, or Carrie or Marcus Silor, Neon Nomad, right? It, it, it just needs someone with insider access to go drop the malware. Lockbit will handle the rest, the, the organization. And this is what ransomware as a service is. Now, one thing I want to say, um, and I, guys, remember, I do not condone nor like ransomware. I think it's, I think it's deplorable, okay? But I'm also, I'm also in a, you know, an academic, and I can appreciate efficiencies, operationals, maturity. Um, you know, I, I like, I like structure, organization, and optimization. I'm, I'm a big fan of it, right? That's why I work in GRC. Um, here's the thing, dude. Lockbit, Lockbit as a service, the backend people that run Lockbit, they are wildly consistent and wildly efficient. Right when when a threat like when a affiliate drops some Lockbit ransomware and, and and it sticks and it and it works, dude. Lockbit's ransomware um like leak site consistent. Um, how they engage with the victims consistent. How the payouts work consistent. Like everything about their operation. I wish I wish they were into like, you know, I don't know, making <laughs> like, you know, they were pro climate change or something like that. Like, I, I wish that they had a better mission. I wish that they were focused on like a greater good mission, but just regardless of what the actual service is, they run a tight ship. Like I, I like, <laughs> I like how they run things. Like, look at this. They got a click here for affiliate rules. 
contact us, how to buy Bitcoin. Like, I like the color scheme. Allison Van Stone, Kimberly, like, look at this from a marketing perspective, clean, good fonts, good typography. I mean, okay, you know, way to go lockpit. Now, having said that, I would love for them to all get arrested and go to jail. So, you know, suck it. But I just, you know, whatever. Lockbit is consistent. Another one that's not going to go anywhere anytime soon. And now a word from our sponsor, Normalize. Normalize is a cloud data security platform that continuously discovers sensitive data and their access paths across your cloud environments. Normalize provides the ability to analyze, prioritize, and respond to data threats to prevent damaging data breaches. Their cloud-native platform manages data security posture and compliance by automatically tracking risks to sensitive data, visually showing teams who can access what, and quickly block unauthorized access or vulnerable points of attack. Discover, visualize, and secure your cloud data in minutes with Normalize Freemium. That's N-O-R-M-A-L-Y-Z-E dot A-I. All right. Interesting. Another, another platform that does kind of uh, exposure management. It'd be really interesting if someone made a, a course about that. Mm -hmm. Spoiler. All right, guys, I hope this works. There we go. All right. So thank you all very much for being here today. I am operating on a um, diminished capacity, but the show must go on. Thank you to Barricade Cyber and Panopsi for their continued support of the show. And also XM Cyber. Guys, XM Cyber, if you didn't know, you in your environment, maybe you have WordPress websites and plugins all over the place, who knows, but you definitely have attack surface. You have misconfigurations, you have vulnerabilities, mismanaged creds. Maybe you have cloud, maybe you're on-prem only, maybe you have both, so you got a hybrid network. Whatever it is, this is your attack surface. This is your exposure. And unfortunately, you might have some visibility over parts of it, but you don't have a cohesive, comprehensive picture of what your attack surface looks like. And this is where XM Cyber comes in. They have a way to address hybrid cloud exposures. So instead of looking at it in the siloed way, they can combine all of the information together and present you an attack graph, an actual live, you know, visual representation. You know how I love visuals. It, it really does look cool. And a, a visual attack graph to allow you to uncover attack paths that you may not already see. And more importantly, security control gaps across your cloud and on-prem network. So you can pinpoint and prioritize the high risk areas, like the choke points that actually put your organization at risk, cut off those attack paths at those key junctures and allow you laser focused remediation to really reduce that attack surface. Spend your time, energy and effort in a very deliberate high risk reduction value adding type way. Go to xmcyber.com, click the link in the description below and you can demo their exposure management platform and see what it is I'm talking about. Very, very cool. If you guys got the newsletter today, I didn't check my email because I was dealing with putting fires out this morning, but hopefully you guys got the Simply Cyber newsletter this morning. If you did not get it, let me know, check your spam. But basically I wrote an email yesterday that had three pieces of actionable intel in it. Um, and you can use that to reduce risk at your organization today. Want to say holla for the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. I believe Alicia Jerry tagged Shalonda on Friday. Shalonda dropped her comment. I noticed that I wasn't connected directly with Alicia Jerry or Shalonda. So I've connected with them. I hope all of you did connect with them also and with the people in the comments. If Shalonda's in chat, I hope she can tag somebody with the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Please go online, whoever she tags. Post your story, post your why. What, what is it about cyber that you love? What are you, what are you up to? And then people in chat, please connect with whoever that is, comment on that and connect with those. Build your network. This is an opportunity to build your network with like-minded professionals who are into support, who are into inclusion. And I'm telling you with 100% certainty, you will be happy you've built a network of your own. Okay, I, I can't tell you when it's gonna pay dividends, but it will, and you will be mad happy. Uh, Jenny Housley, if you're in chat, please keep an eye for Shalonda. Uh, if at, at the end of jawjacking, if Shalonda, oh, Shalonda's tagging Michaela Boyd. Michaela Boyd in the house. All right. Thank you very much, Shalonda. 
All right, guys. It is Monday, which is Callan's Art of the Week. If you are uh, new here, every single day we have kind of one special activity. I have two boys. One of them is a seven-year-old, and he is very into art. He's very good at it, and we feature one of his things that he did over the weekend. Now, I told you Callan got into a new format um, this weekend. He busted out he busted out the, um, the pottery, the potter thing, and made your classic first pottery bowl right had it hardened did a little paint job on it got all up into it i know it's not really snapping on the zoom because the camera's uh trained to zoom on, uh snap on my face but just know that we've got uh pottery going on up in this house all right thank you very much callan for your art of the week let's get back into the news y'all Alien Fox malware targets API keys and secrets from AWS, Google, and Microsoft Cloud services. A new comprehensive toolset called Alien Fox is being distributed on Telegram as a way for threat actors to harvest credentials from API keys and secrets from popular cloud service providers. Sentinel One calls this, quote, an unreported trend towards attacking more minimal cloud services unsuitable for crypto mining in order to enable and expand subsequent campaigns, end quote. The malware is described as highly modular and constantly evolving to accommodate new features and performance improvements. Primary use of Alien Fox is to enumerate misconfigured hosts via scanning platforms like Leak IX and Security Trails and subsequently leverage various scripts in the toolkit to extract credentials from configuration files exposed on the servers. Okay, so this is interesting. And guys, you know... So the, 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 the stream sponsors, the businesses, right? Your, your, uh, Eric, your Barricade, your Panopsi, your XM Cyber, right? Yeah, they, 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 um, we have a relationship. They sponsor the show and I mention them and do the read and all that. And that's fine because I believe in their products. This story right here, this is exactly why you would want to use a tool like XM Cyber, okay? What this, this trend, this malware does is it basically looks for misconfigurations in your external facing infrastructure and then ex and then exploits it um not not like a zero day exploit but if you have misconfigurations if you have mismanaged credentials if you have secrets that are publicly exposed this tool will discover it and suck it up like a vacuum cleaner okay uh this is this is this is interesting, okay? You can see here the toolkit extracts credentials from misconfigured file servers uh, or files exposed on the internet. You can see these are all like CMS or content management systems, right? WordPress, we talked about WordPress already, Drupal, Joomla. I know, um, I believe uh, Codename Purple is running uh, Drupal. So anyways, th these are really um, complex web systems like they call it web frameworks but basically you can stand up like a really involved integrated website with these tools but because they are comprehensive because they are complex they have a lot of uh attack surface and risk associated with them okay um you can see here there's you know a nice little graphic that explains how how this is done i find it interesting that it's being um for, and by the way i i do i do love the ascii art and uh green font on black uh, is my default go-to for my terminal shells. Just just so people know, I do I do like that look. I, of course, I'm 43. This is like, it, like you young bucks probably don't realize this, but this is what it used to look like all the time. You did <laughs> you couldn't configure it. This is what you got. So for me, it's uh, uh, nostalgic to see it. Um, I find it interesting that it's it's getting transmitted around Telegram. I still don't understand. Is there like a yellow pages for Telegram channels or something like that? Like. I, I have a couple group chats on Telegram, but I knew everybody. I, I already know everybody. I, I'm on like actually two Telegram channels that uh, just send out like cybersecurity news. It's almost like a blog type feed. And I don't even know where I got on those. Like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, but I'm old, so I'm just going to go outside and yell at a cloud. <laughs> All right. Be mindful of this, guys. This is a trend. I'm personally going to read up on this story a little bit more. if. Um, if it's being reported as a trend, I, I need to know about it. You need to know about it, right? If this is an attack method, if, if this is a, a, a technique that is like the new attack method, 
you got to be mindful of it. And this is why you must be a lifelong learner to be really effective in cybersecurity. If you're going to a job interview this week, I would recommend studying this story and understanding this particular attack technique, because if you get asked about current events or trend or, or, or like, oh, hey, you, you suspect a compromise in your environment, what would be the first thing you do? That You get a lot of scenario-based questions in interviews. If you start dropping knowledge about alien fox and how it's a new threat and how you know malware is starting to be um, delivered uh, or shared via telegram channels and you know about these uh, basically info stealers around uh, web frameworks, people's heads are going to explode when you're telling them this. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I've been in many, many interviews and hired people. And when they start saying things that get the wheels turning, you're like, yes, like this person, like it leaves a really good taste in your mouth. Like, believe me, okay? I know it's hard if some of these terms are new to you, but just believe me. Put in the time, read the story, be prepared to talk about it in an interview. Lewis and Clark College Cyber Attack Claimed by Notorious Ransomware Gang. The Vice Society Cybercrime Group has taken credit for the attack, posting samples of passports as well as documents that include social security numbers, insurance files, W-9 forms, contracts, oh. and more. Starting on March 3rd, the school sent out several urgent messages on social media and on its website, notifying students and employees that several of its systems were down. The outages lasted until March 7th. The Portland, Oregon Liberal Arts College did not respond to requests for comment about whether a ransom was demanded or will be paid. QNAP. Obviously, obviously, a ransom was demanded. Now, whether they pay or not is different. This is, this is, man, this is cold. This is cold. So Vice Society, uh, they are the ones who hit the Los Angeles um, County school system back in, I don't know, uh, January. Um, so they're targeting K through 12, which is a really like basically, and, well, not K through 12, but like the, the education sector, which is a really weak sector from a cybersecurity perspective. Um, and we've said it on the channel multiple times. I've worked in uh, higher ed before. I worked at a medical university for six, seven years. Um, it's not good, guys. I mean, I, I was healthcare as well. So I, we had a little bit more cashish. But for the most part, higher ed, man, like academics want to collaborate. They want free, <laughs> free love, free data. You, I, I want to share with you, you know, don't get in my way, nerd. Like you're, 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 you're stifling innovation, Jerry. So anyways, long story short, massive attack surface all up in um, education sector. Vice Society knows this. They exploit it. This is gross. They're actually posting people's full passports on stream. I mean, on stream, on, on public breach sites. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, again, ransomware, the, 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 the playbook is pretty consistent at this point. You get hit, they drop uh, malware. They post uh, some data sets to... Uh, persuade you and incentivize you to pay their ransom. Uh, the business either pays or doesn't, they recover. You get two years of identity theft protection and you're back on. And maybe if you're Dish Network, you get sued by a bunch of lawyers, right? Unfortunately for Lewis and Clark, this sucks. Um, they're just gonna have to recover and move on, right? That's that's all there is to it. I do feel bad, like, well, I do feel bad if, um, I'm I'm kind of curious on this one really quickly. I'm going into this. Lewis and Clark University CISO. Let's see. I'm just kind of curious to see if this, this will come up with anything. Uh, yep, well, CTO, this guy, Martin Gang. This guy's having a tough day. This guy's having a tough day. He's only been there, he's been there about two years. Now he's the CTO, which means he's like, related but he may not be directly taking on all this stuff but it's not a good day he's in idaho too so he works remotely i assume because the school's in portland yikes I, but i mean this is like the human part of it guys there's somebody on the other on the other side right someone's suffering fixes pseudo privilege escalation bug in nas devices 
QNAP. Taiwanese vendor QNAP warns customers to update their network-attached storage devices to address a high-severity pseudo-privilege escalation vulnerability tracked as CVE-2023-22809. The vulnerability was discovered by security firm Synactive. It is a sudoers policy bypass in sudo version 1.9.12p1 when using sudo edit. An attacker can trigger the vulnerability to achieve privilege escalation by editing unauthorized files after appending arbitrary entries to the list of files to process. University student uses... All right, I mean, whatever. QNAP, QNAP, the, um, the poster child for what not to do, getting hit again, right? These guys, basically, um, th this isn't much, right? So there's a privilege escalation bug in network attacks storage devices if you're running a qnap for personal if you're running a qnap at your business as some type of like file server this applies to you two things one uh if it's not you know internet facing it's probably a lower risk if it is you got to remember all the privilege escalation is right not to downplay it but like threat actors have to compromise the box first with non-privileged credentials and then escalate them using a privilege escalation technique. This is a common part of the attack kill chain. So this this one, while not good, is not as serious or as bad simply because the device would have to get compromised. Now, if you haven't been paying, if you haven't been paying attention or taking care of your QNAP devices, last year we covered on the show, like it felt like every week, massive QNAP vulnerabilities leading to active remote exploitation. So there are documented, you know, point and click exploitations for devices if you're not keeping them up to date. Uh, so just be mindful of that. But um, this is just, to me, a lower level bug, but it says a high severity uh, pseudo privilege escalation bug. My thoughts are it's it's high severity because it's it's easy to do and you get full root privileges, right? You can execute as pseudo so you, you can execute with root privileges on the box, that, and it, it's probably very easy to do, which is why it's a high severity. But just be mindful that the device would have to be compromised in the first place, right? Um, again, they say it focuses on these particular uh, type of devices, QTS, QUTS Hero, QUTS Cloud, and QVP. I just want to look at the CVE here. CVE, um, you can see here they have a score of 7.8, which says high, but... I don't know. I hate to be such a nerd, but like, I don't get out of bed for less than a nine, for less than a nine base score. Um, but I, I'm being slightly playful. Just know that, you know, it, it's important, but it's not like, you know, s stop the stream and, and get, get to it. AI chatbot to get parking fine revoked. When Millie Holton received the notice from York City Council in the UK, she said she was tempted to pay rather than spend time compiling a response. However, the 22-year-old asked ChatGPT to please help me write a letter to the council. They gave me a parking ticket, and she sent it off. The authority withdrew the fine notice. Holton said the fine was wrongly issued for parking on her street as she has a permit to do so, but she had considered paying the fine simply because she was busy with academic work in the final year of her events and business management degree. We will not be holding... All right, so here's another fun use of ChatGPT. I have seen uh, people who have done this. Hello, Millie. Um, I have seen people who have done this, uh, like r written scripts to help parking, like, you know, get parking tickets out. Like, this is fun that she used as a chatbot. Guys, if I had time, energy, and effort, just really quickly, someone, this is like a, you know, a million dollar idea. If you wrote a system that, you know, for, for five bucks, right, or, 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 or one dollar or whatever, you just type in your name and like, It'll send you a um, a script to copy and paste and send to get the to get the parking ticket revoked. People would pay that, right? Like it's like, oh, do you pay a fifty dollar parking ticket or do you pay five dollars uh, for this thing? You could script and automate this whole thing, right? Again, there's a million ideas out there on how to make money with chatbots. This one's a proven one. I I really, oh yeah, oh, God. See, I don't have the soundboard uh, for for that. Let me. Um, let me just really quickly. I, I feel like we got to get Joshua in here, right? I do feel like it's a, a million dollar idea, but good for her 
Finally, a, a use case where it's like less nefarious, less about. Great cash, homie. All right, let me. Let me see. Do you want to play a game? Where's the Joshua one? There we go. Shall we play a game? There we go. Thank you. Thank you, Joshua. All right, guys. So, you know, just don't be shy with. Uh, with chat GPT, it's very powerful. I almost feel like this use case is like an inch deep. You can go like a mile deep with chat GPT. Ooh, Aiden Nike passing the CISSP. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. A super cyber Friday discussion. All right. Okay. So check it out. Let me bring the volume down. Let me do this. Come on, man. All right, guys, I want to thank you for being here. 226 of you this morning for spending your day. Before you go, if you were here just for the news, I got a really fun one for you today. Okay, guys, I'm all over the map when it comes to information security, cybersecurity. I do offensive, defensive, GRC. I do love me some GRC. At 4 p.m. today, listen up, because this, this is a one time offer. At 4 p.m. today, I, Jerry, will be going live just like right now, but I'll be live streaming at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And I'll be playing Haiku Pro, a cyber range learning experience. I have coordinated with the company Haiku to make the range that we will be playing free to the Simply Cyber community during the live stream. So what does this mean? I am going to be doing a range called Life Cycle. Life Cycle is will capture and demonstrate the entire cyber threat actor kill chain, the entire life cycle from recon to executing objectives on target. We'll do initial exploitation, weaponization, delivery, privilege escalation, the works. I'm going to do all of it. And you'll be able to play the range live with me at the same time. I, I'm basically going to teach a class on the cyber kill chain at 4 p.m. today that you can follow along. We'll go through it together. I will be explaining in great detail every step of what I'm doing. I'll be answering questions live in stream. It'll be a one hour experience. After the stream ends, the range will no longer be free. So if you're watching on replay, you, you, you'll you have to pay if you want to follow along or could just watch. But, but if you're with me at four, you will be able to do it all for free. So please come hang out. I'm super pumped. I think it's going to be wicked fun. I made this really fun thumbnail for it. Um, it's 4 p.m. Eastern time, 4 p.m. Eastern time today, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, go to simplycyber.io slash streams, go to my YouTube channel, whatever you want. Like this is what you're looking for. This thumbnail, it's going to be wicked. Awesome. It is going to be wicked fun. It is. It's very cool. All right. So if you were here just for the news, thank you very much. Uh, please feel free to peace out. I'll spend a few minutes. We, if you're new here uh, at the end of the stream, for those who want, I do a little bit of jaw jacking, we call it. And uh, we basically just have a little bit of a, a, a chat, a little bit of a spell. And uh, But for those who just want the news and have to get to work, we'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time for tomorrow's stream. We're getting close to the end of the 10 a.m. streams, by the way, y'all. Only a couple more weeks. Only a couple more weeks in the semester. And then that's it. All right. Let's oh Paula Terranova installed Cali Purple. Paula, how how was it? Let us know. Oh cool, Gregor. It'll be nice to see you. Shalanda? Oh, okay. Yeah, Shalanda, if um if whomever you tagged did not speak up, um please feel feel free to tag someone else. I feel like you know, you've <laughs> it's definitely been about twenty minutes. Like you you've given a fair a fair amount of time. Yeah, Aaron Lancaster, I agree that the uh, 10 a.m. streams that they're um, I want a nice, consistent 8 a.m. stream. So I'm going to move my teaching schedule around to accommodate this, the community. Also. Oh, very nice, Paula. Also, the, the, the workshop, we're still we're still kind of playing around with names for the studio, but uh, I'm kind of I'm trying out the workshop. Uh, the workshop's being delivered on Wednesday, so Wednesday this week. Um, the new YouTube studio is being delivered Wednesday morning, so there'll be some work done on that this weekend. Thanks, Marcus. 
You are a threat, Intel Repo. Getting all I need is a daily dose, Jerry. Oh, very cool. Thank you very much. Aji boy. Oh, Paula, thank you. This this community is a rock star. That's what we are. We rule. Yes, the water will come out in a nice stream. I thought I was going to get a break from the Carl soundbite after my subconscious played it in my head, but Jerry just had to find a workaround. That's right, Crinkles. My soundboard is totally jacked up. I Like, I used to be able to change scenes, start and stop Spotify, play sound effects, and right now, uh, I just got a couple key... I mean, I, I even started the stream a few minutes late because, like, literally, literally, I hit the button i have a button that i push and it like pops all the apps i need for my production like for a stream right so i i can push a button and like i'm like 80 percent of the way set up for a stream i pushed the button my computer crashed i rebooted and when it came up the profile was gone which is wicked weird oh hey let's talk about um emotes right you guys want to vote on an emote check this out yes and i'll start a poll okay um let me do this Oh, oh, and I got a new stream dropping on, um, God, I always remember so much stuff during the jaw jacking period. I've got a new stream dropping, um, look at this, this week, this week, I got a new stream dropping. The number one mistake people who are trying to break into cybersecurity are making. Number one mistake, I covered at great length. That video will drop. I'm waiting uh, to get it back from the editors, but they promised me today. Okay, so check it out, guys. We've got uh, at least one more emote to add to the to the um, thing. We got a couple options, okay? Jen Easterly. Jen Easterly for Sissa. Okay, so anytime Sissa stories come up or Jen Easterly, which she's in the news all the time, we could have a Jen Easterly one. Um, hold on one second. What is going on, bro? Oh, I can't go any higher. So Jenny Easterly, um, we could come up with something for jaw jacking time. Bender from uh, Breakfast Club. Cash rules everything around me. Wu Tang. All about the Benjamins, right? We got actual Wu Tang. We've got uh, Barricade Cyber Solutions logo, and then you know a couple other ones. So if you guys are interested, we we do have um, we do have at least one slot open. We might have two. I was kind of a fan of the Jenny Sterling one, but I do like uh, I do like uh, community. So let me know what you guys think. Here, I'll start a poll. New emote. Jen Easterly. Uh, Wu-Tang. All right, Cream. Smoky. There. And, um... Breakfast Club. All right, here we go. Totes. All right. Wonder if I can uh try to get them all on the same page. Vote, vote. All right, there we go. All right. All right, Jenny Housley. Uh oh, Anusha got tagged. All right, very cool. Who are you people? Elite gunslinger. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yes, this is stream beats all day long. <laughs> all right, looking at the voting. Jen Easterly is narrowly edging it out with 64 votes in. A lot of people liking the Wu Tang. There's two different Wu Tangs. There's the Wu, and then there's the Cream. We do have a bunch of emotes that I feel like don't get used very often, right? There's, there's, you can see them on stream. There's me, a couple of me. Carl gets used a lot. Elon doesn't really get used that much. Oprah gets used a lot. The coffee cup. I mean, we could replace the coffee cup. I do like a good yeet. Let's see. Finnish rap politicians got a like, even though the prime minister lost. The woo. All about the woo. 
Oh, by the way, guys, just a, another fun fact while the votes are coming in. I bought a San Diego State University basketball t-shirt like last week. I'm all, I'm all on board. I watched that game on Saturday. Epic, epic conclusion. I'm super pumped for tonight. All right. We got some votes for Barricade. All right. Don't we just dumpster fire instead of Elon? Exactly. All right, guys. I'm. This is kind of like... I mean, Jen's winning. Jen's winning, but... We have to have Trigger for Wu-Tang, like a soundbite or something. Yep. Uh, Robert Moritz, I think you have to accept gifts. Like, it's like a setting. Someone in chat, please help, but... Yeah, exactly. We could swap them out. I don't know, guys. Almost 100 people voting. Jen Easterly's winning 53%. So, I don't know. I hmm. It's in the poll. Jen Easterly, 53%. Have a great day, Tom Bishop. Let me see how many emotes I could get. Maybe I could put um, more in than just one, right? Protect your neck. <laughs> it's the woo. All right, guys. Whoops. All right, Paula Terranova, gifting 20 squads. Dang. Thank you, Paula. Very nice of you. Very kind of you. We're definitely uh, internal stranger. You'll have to be more specific. I, I have um, many things going on to, to deliver simply cyber. I'm using Streamlabs desktop pu pushed into Restream. I use a stream deck for my sound. I'm using Spotify for my audio. Alana, yes, exactly, guys. I was going to end the stream, but with... Paula Terranova dropping 20 subs. I kind of want to, I want to spend a minute and say, hi, let me check my calendar and make sure I don't have a 9 a.m. Right. I have a 920. I have a 920. Oh, oh, this is Canva, internal stranger. This is Canva. If you don't, if you're not using Canva, you're, uh, you're, you're fighting with one arm tied behind your back. Canva is uh, free. I, I pay for it, but you can use it for free. And there is a lot of uh, power to it. Mr. Even Stranger says 4 p.m. for Haiku. Is that Eastern time? Yes. 4 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Eastern. Here's a link to the stream. Come hang out. Let me see. Um, I'll post it on social media too. It says only five people are waiting. You can get notified when I go live. Yeah. Yeah, you can use GIMP to do it. Meatwad. I do love... Uh... No, Adam, no more crank coffee. I'm done with that. Guys, actually, so as an update on the coffee, um, I did like the Sumatra. I did like the Espresso Dark Roast. Um, I could probably do the Espresso Dark Roast, but... Like I said, this company wanted to partner with me. So essentially, I'd be drinking the coffee and people could purchase the same coffee, right? And I, they would, you know, the coffee would be like 15 bucks a bag. The bag would cost $10. And then I, Jerry, would get $5 for every bag of coffee made. So then there's like a financial incentive. It's product. I, you know, so that's that's all good. But the thing is, I really like Starbucks French Roast. And I'm not going to do... Two things. One, I'm not going to drink Starbucks French roast and lie to you and tell you that I'm drinking the espresso. Two, I'm not going to drink the espresso when I prefer Starbucks dark roast. Like, I'm not going to drink the espresso just so I can make money. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'd, like to me, it didn't work out, right? So I'm not going to do that. Um, so th that's that. So I'm, I'm on the Starbucks French roast range. Moon and Nights. Oh, I love the Moon and Nights. Click join three ellipses, gift settings, toggle on. Thank you very much, Cyber Ninja. 
Yeah. I'd rather be true to myself and make $5 per coffee, not make $5 per bag of coffee. You know what I mean? Yes, if Starbucks wanted to partner with me, hell yeah, let's go. Exactly. You know what, you know what Mrs. Osier said too? She's like, you know, there's a reason that they dominate in the market. They have great coffee. You know, you gotta go, gotta go with it. I have not tried anything. I've never even heard of Ariel Resupply, so. The truth. Yes, the truth. Paul Pierce in the house. Yeah, exactly, Chinadu. I mean, guys, like, if I really want, if I was really, like, you know what I mean? Like, if I have, you know, merch, you know, like, if I wanted to be making money, right, you can buy, you could, you could support the channel and look good doing it, buying Simply Cyber gear, right? By the way, um, there's, there's sales from time to time on the Simply Cyber gear. I, I don't choose when they happen. I get, I get told because of the platform, the Spreadshop platform, they do it. But anyways, my team replay people love it. Oh, also, 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 um, guys, if you get the newsletter this morning, um, if you got the newsletter this morning, um, I put in a link, it's an affiliate link, but I put in a link to the new API hacking course at TCM. I, I, I want to take this, guys. I definitely want to take this. Here, I'm going to... Uh, look at this. I'm super into this. Six hours of content. It's going to be fun. And they, they got Alex, this the new guy over there at TCM. Um, he's a web app guy. I just I, I just think it's cool. I'm, I'm excited. I want to take it. I wish I had more time, honestly. I'm working on my own courses. I, I have I have one that is going to be coming out pretty soon. But I love learning. I love cybersecurity. I really want to take this class. So stay tuned for that. I'll tell you what, guys. I wish. I mean, I I really like working my full time job. But I wish I could do Simply Cyber full time. The, the sponsors, <laughs> the the bags of coffee, all that. If I can reach a, a, an escape velocity of regular income to, to stop my regular job, I would absolutely do that. And then I could take all these classes and make video content about all this stuff. And yeah, I've got, I got plans, but right now I don't have the time. I need to get time. Oh God, David Beard. Yep. Business email compromise is a real thing, man. Yep. Will I do a qualitative, quantitative risk assessment course? Maybe. I, I, I might do that. I, I, you know, it's interesting. Um, so I have the GRC Analyst Masterclass. I'm working on a Cyber 101 class. I would really like to build um, a bunch of courses that all directly work towards GRC work and kind of, it's a, a complete career path, right? So then Cyber 101 gets you exposed. GRC Analyst gives you that uh, entry-level tier one analyst and then I want to do like qualitative risk assessment, enterprise risk assessment, quantitative quantitative risk assessment, leading and executing tabletop exercises, CISO training, right? Like I would love to do the entire GRC career journey, but I, it takes time, guys. And I like, you know what I don't have infinite of? Time. But like I said, if I can hit escape velocity, let's go. Mm. API Sec University is free and amazing. Interesting. Have a good one, Nathan Bowen. Cool. Here, I'll drop this in chat. I, I I don't know anything about this. I haven't taken this, but this just came through stream as like, what you know, uh, well endorsed. So let's let's drop that. Yep. Oh, don't. Oh, that's tough, K. Scott Powell. I'm glad people are reaching out to you, though. That's good. Thanks, Anusha. I'd love to. So, D. Crash saying this is really good content. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. 
Yeah, this guy right here, Corey Ball. Very cool. API, pen test, API, SAC fundamentals. Uh, all right. Guys, I wish you all the very best. So, William Welch, if you were here on Friday, it was like uh, new, um, April Fool's Day, and I, I allowed, um, I basically made the chat, Discord chat, so people could do animated GIFs and stuff. But um, now, for the for the normal for the normal streams, we'll we'll rock on YouTube here. Occasionally, we'll bring in Discord. I've got it set up now. We can do that. Paula, thank you, Paula. Thank you, Eric Taylor Barricade. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the Discord stuff too. It was it was a it was a dumpster fire for uh, the stream on YouTube, but you know what are you gonna do? I love it. Exactly, David Beard. You know what I really want to do? Um, once 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 I you know if and when I ever like go full time or whatever, what I really want to do is like cohort based training. So like live, you know like like basically what John Strand does, right? You know how he does his. Uh, pay what you can courses live over a week once a quarter that is what i want to do i want to do live coursework you know like one week a, a month or one week a year, uh, a quarter probably one week a quarter and no, no no maybe one week a month and i'll do like three courses and like you know q1 month one is you know and so like month one of every q will be the same course that's what i really want to do yeah Thanks, Misty Eyed. Uh, all right, guys, we're a couple minutes over nine. I enjoy the newsletter. Remember, um, t um, if you um, if you didn't sign up, sign up. Um, you, there's a threat intel per industry email that comes out on Wednesday mornings. Um, there's the newsletter on three pieces of actionable info. People are calling it the the crush letter, the crush letter. I've heard it referenced. So get the crush on Mondays. Sign up at simplycyber.io slash newsletter. And um, I think I have the ability to send the email again to people who did not open it the first time. So I think I might start on Tuesday, resend the email that if you didn't open it on Monday and then Wednesday, you'll get the, the thread intel email. We'll see how it goes. Oh, very cool, Bill. All right, guys, I'm going to boogie out of here. Y'all be good. See you guys at 4 p.m. Eastern time, hopefully, to come hang out and hack, hack the Gibson with me. All right? Be good, everybody. We'll see you. Until next time, stay secure.